Good morning, everyone, and happy Watershed Wednesday. I'm Evan with Minnesota Trout Unlimited. Uh, here again with me are two amazing outdoor folks. I will let them introduce themselves. Hey guys, I'm Nicole. I'm from the St. Croix River Association, and I'm excited to be here with you today. Hey, it's Jeremiah from the St. Croix River Association, and it's good to be back. So today we are out exploring Browns Creek just outside of downtown Stillwater, just north of Stillwater a little bit. Uh, this is a designated trout stream. There's also a super cool paved state trail that runs along it. But uh, we'll do some exploring here, teach you some more. Stay tuned. All right, so we're back at it again with the signs of life as we wait for the stream to warm up. Uh, or at least the weather to warm up so we don't freeze right away. So let's dive in and see what we find. So a quick sign of life is this rub on this tree. There's a couple of them. This is from a male deer, otherwise known as a buck. Uh, they use their antlers to make these rubs on these trees to kind of mark their territory and let other deer know that this is their place. So in this little uh, floodplain or riparian zone, we found what looks like markings of a beaver uh, that chewed down this tree and nod its way through it. Uh, I guess the goal today now is to just find the beaver. So, so we found Sasquatch's home, so a little hut. Uh, definitely a sign of life. Of course not from Sasquatch, but from people. Uh, but it's pretty well built and a cool little spot here on Browns Creek. So. Uh, we found just this little nest in this tree. Uh, not sure what bird it is, but can't be a huge bird, but probably not a small one either. So if you know, let us know. <laughs> Uh, so Nicole was over here uh, just exploring and found this hole in this tree with some nesting material stuffed in it. Uh, another critter that, if you know what it is, let us know. Pretty cool little spot though. So in this riparian zone or buffer zone, uh, we found some giant horsetail. And we were looking around and playing with it. And you just peel it off. Peel off the green layer plant material and you find little ice cubes, which means these uh, horsetail were likely still photosynthesizing before the last freeze, which is pretty cool. And you can tell by them being green that they were definitely photosynthesizing. Trumpeter swans. <laughs> they're flying the wrong way though. Yeah, they're going north. <laughs> All right, so we just walked up the hill from down there at Browns Creek and Right here is the road. We are right next to the major highway um, going down through Stillwater up along the St. Croix River. Um, these roads are have a lot of traffic of vehicles, which, you know, vehicles, they have a lot of oils that they drop off, and we have to keep the roads salted so the vehicles don't spin out. It's important, but those salts and the oils and all the other litter and debris runs off from the road and could go right into our streams and pollute it really easily. So luckily, Browns Creek is pretty well protected by a buffer zone, which we are going to measure today and talk about. All right, so buffer zones are really important because they keep, like I said, pollution and trash, like there's some trash right here, from going down into the creek. Now it's important that buffer zones have healthy vegetation with deep roots to keep the hill from eroding. We have a lot of runoff, just rain and snow in the spring that can erode the hill. Luckily we've got lots of trees and plants in here that will prevent that erosion and pick up trash and keep salt and other pollution from reaching the river. Currently the state recommends a buffer zone of about 50 feet and that can be from a road um, to a creek or from agriculture land to a creek. And so we're going to measure this buffer zone today and see if it's adequate, see where it's at. So Jeremiah's going to hold the measuring tape and I'll see you guys in a minute. Good job! <laughs> Jeremiah, what's your guess? How, how large is this buffer? Like 60 yards. 60 yards? What's, what is that in feet? <laughs> 60 times 3. Uh, 60 times 3? So whatever that is. Okay. 180, I, yeah. 180 feet. I, uh... Oh, I think I oh so that's... She hit 100. So that's, that's 100 right there. feet right there. Okay. That's pretty good. That's over 50. Okay, so we restarted from the 100 foot mark. And what was the total down there? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on camera. <laughs> 
124 foot buffer. Sweet! Alright, so I'm standing here next to a goldenrod that I mentioned earlier. Goldenrod's a great plant. Some people think that it is aggressive and takes over, but in an area like this, it's fantastic. It has really long roots, as long or usually longer than the plant is tall above the ground. So imagine those roots going all the way down into the ground. They prevent erosion, so the sides of this creek here are nice and strong and not falling in. And you can look at the ground and see all the leaves that are being stopped. So the leaves aren't running into the creek, which adds a lot of nutrients that the creek doesn't need. So this is a great buffer habitat here with lots of native plants to keep everything intact. All right, so here's another great example of the buffer zone and its benefits for habitat. Uh, having a large buffer where we don't have to worry about people or houses, we can let dead trees stand and a tree like this can stand for many more years and it's a great habitat for rodents and birds alike. Like Jeremiah showed in the signs of life, there was another tree that had an animal living in it. This one's got some some fur, some seeds, some leaves stuffed in there. It doesn't quite look like a bird's nest, so maybe it's a squirrel or a small rodent that's making home in there. This is Brown's Creek, named for the original landowner uh, who first settled up on top of the bluff in the 1800s. I believe he was a big uh, lumber guy as well. Uh, today, there's different kinds of browns in here. Brown trout. Uh, there aren't a lot of them. But in previous surveys, they have found a lot of browns up to size 16 to even 18 inches, which is pretty dang cool. Uh, we're going to jump in the water, see what's living in there, what kind of macros we can find. Um, you can also notice it's pretty much free-flowing, which indicates uh, what we learned about last time. It's a spring-fed trout stream. So Browns Creek is a backwards trout stream way up at the headwaters, it comes out of a pond and swamp area and the water is actually very warm. As it gets closer to the St. Croix River, it cuts deeper and deeper into the surrounding lime and sandstone uh, where it picks up more cool, clean, oxygenated uh, groundwater, uh, which is why we find so many trout in this area. So we're going to take a look, uh, see what our water quality is by sampling some macros. We can also tell by what we find in the uh, water. Uh, how effective this buffer is at stopping chemical pollutants. You ready for this? Yeah, I remember my waders this time. So. Woohoo! <laughs> bust your best disco move. <laughs> With that music, I have yeah, the best Yeah, it's the best beat there is. <laughs> it really is. Good job. We're using these kick nets to uh, filter out the substrate that Jeremiah is kicking up with his heels. Okay, I think that's good. We'll pick it up here. Just gonna lay it out. Let's see what we got. Whoa! Ooh. All sorts of crawly dudes on here. Plenty of case caddis. Lots of caddis. Plenty of scuds. Look at all this caddis. Of scuds. Oh yeah, tons of caddis. Here's a scud. We had a mayfly. I did crawling. just see here's a mayfly right here. Oh, right? Yep. Oh man, Jeremiah just found the best water quality indicator out there. Uh, it's only got two tails, which means it is a stonefly nymph. They need the highest water quality there is. So, uh, great work, bud. Good eyes. <laughs> Thanks. So, judging by what we're finding, which is a bunch of cased caddis, scuds, stoneflies, a couple small mayflies, uh, it would appear that this stream and its buffer zone is working very well and the uh, water quality is very high. So stream uh, meanders are really important for trout uh, and all fish especially. Um, you can see how this stream makes a beautiful S turn right here. On every bend and every curve that current acts like a chainsaw and digs out sediment and gravel, makes it really deep, uh, which we call uh, a pool and trout will sit in these areas uh, to hide from predators, uh, to rest out of the main current, things like that. Where our S's go straight again, um, it will shallow out, usually current will pick up and it will uh, carry more silt with it, uh, all, or like fine mud and sand. Um, and the rocks are really good for areas for macros to grow. It's also the area where trout will make their uh, nests in the fall and uh, uh, the water rushing over the rocks will capture oxygen and bring it into the water as well. So stream meanders are super important for trout habitat. 
Hey, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, we're all slightly hypothermic, so we're gonna get out of here. Uh, thanks for watching. Let us know if you want us to do more videos together. Hope you learned something. Uh, we'll see you next week. Take hey. it easy. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>